Hello, in the following video we will be covering how to create admin action extensions. Admin extensions allow you to integrate your app directly into Shopify admin without requiring merchants to switch to your app's view whenever they need to interact with it. This will end up improving the UX of your app, making it feel more integrated into the platform and enabling you to build workflows that were not possible before. There are two types of admin extensions at the time of recording this video. Action exten extensions, which are these ones, and admin block extensions, which are these ones. The main difference in between them is how the merchant interacts with them. Admin ex actions, as you can see in this video playing here, require the merchant to click this more actions button, and then that will display a model over here that will allow them to interact with your app. Once the model is closed, the page will be refreshed and the changes the merchant made will be reflected in the page, if any. On the other hand, admin, admin blocks just display a block here with information. The merchant can, of course, interact with them. As you can see here, they have a button, for example, here that they can use to create a shop code. But at the moment, they are in developer preview, so we will not be covering them in this video. We will be mainly focusing on admin actions. So now let's see how we can create one of them. OK, so now from VS Code, I'm going to run npm init Shopify app latest. And what this will do is that it will ask me the name of the extension, in this case, admin action extension demo. And I'm going to select start by adding your first extension, which is a Shopify template for an app that only has code for extension instead of just the full UI as the other template does. So let's give this a moment to install all the, all the dependencies and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now that this finished installing, let's take all of these files and move them out. Let's delete this folder and let's run npm run Shopify app generate extension. This will ask us for a name for the app. Let's create as a new app and let's set this as a default name, which is what we typed in, this, in the previous step. It will populate this file and then it will ask us for the type of extension that we want to create. In this case, an admin action. Let's name this admin action demo. I will be selecting TypeScript with React, but feel free to select whichever option of this you feel more comfortable with. And now let's wait for the dependencies to finish installing. Okay, let's see which files we got from installing this extension. So here, this action extension that DSX is the one that controls what is being rendered by our extension. And if you saw the checkout UI extensions video, you will see a lot of similarities here. For example, this target over here controls in which part of the UI this extension will be rendered. And these components over here are the ones that we use to generate the UI because we cannot use arbitrary HTML in this type of extensions neither. We are limited to the components that Shopify provides us. So there is consistency across the admin UI. Now for the configuration of the extension, this is where you will control that. Something to notice here is that if you wanted to change where this extension is being rendered, you will have to change it both, both here and also here. So these two values must be the same. We'll be going deeper into that later in this video. But keep in mind that if, if you want to render it in different places, this over here is all the places that you have available at the moment. So now let's run this extension and let's see how it looks like. So I'll be running from the root here, npm from dev. This will create a preview URL that I'll be able to check in the browser. So I'll be pressing P. And here, first, I'll, I'll have to install the app. So let's do that. And once installed, I can click over here And this is what my extension looks like. So I'm in the admin product page. The reason for this is because the rendering point that I select here is the product details, which is this page over here. And this current product here is exactly this text. However, you may notice that here it says current product, but doesn't show the title. And here we are 
rendering the title. So why is that? Okay, so the issue is that when we created our app, this scopes field over here is empty and we have to populate it depending on which type of information our app is trying to access. So in the documentation here, I'll leave this link in the description, but here are all the possible scopes. And in this case, we care about write products and read products. So I'll be copying this and pasting them over here. And then I'm going to run npm run Shopify app config push. This will update our app. We will have to install it again. So let me run npm run that. This will once again create the developers the development server. I'm going to press P. I'm going to install the app. This will update the app because Shopify detected that it is already installed. So now I'll close this and I will go to my extension. And now we can see that the gift card product is being currently rendered over here. It's titles at least. You could, you could have added this from the beginning, by the way, but I wanted to show how you will do so if you forgot to do it from the get-go because... Okay, so now that we saw that, let's explore the extension that we will be creating in this video. So here in the admin, let me go to the products view. And over here, a place that we can use to place one of these admin extensions is over here in this menu. So for example, you can see that apps like Shopify Flow already are doing so. We are going to place our admin extension over here as well. We are going to be creating one that will allow us to select two products and we will create a bundle out of them. So let's start structuring our project to do so. Okay, so the next step is going to the documentation and here in extension targets, we're going to look for the name of the place that we want to render our, our extension in. So we care about product index. The product index is this page over here and we can render in two places, either in this menu when there is at least one product selected or over here. There will be a more actions button if we had at least one extension that was rendering in that place. We don't at the moment, so we don't see that button, but in this case, we care about product index selection action, which is the one that we'll get when we have at least one product selected here. Because for creating a bundle, the workflow that we will do is we select two products, we will cl click on here on more actions, and then we will find our app in here. And this will pop up a model to name the bundle and create it. So I will be copying this like this. And then in VS Code, I'm going to paste it here. And in Shopify app.toml, Shopify extension.toml, sorry, I'm going to paste it here as well. I'm going to restart the development server. And now let's preview this. I'll hit P again. And we can see here that now when we preview, we are redirected to the product index. I'll minimize this. And if I select that at least one product and click on more actions, here I can see my extension, of course, this is showing the name because I'm selecting this. I will show you how it is getting this name, but let's try again. Let's try with a different product. If I click on this one, run this, we can see that we get the correct name. So how it is getting it? How was it possible that we had an extension in a completely different page and it is working now? Well, we'll see that in a moment. Okay, so here in the docs, we can see all of the properties that this use API hook returns. In this case, we see close data extension, but the one that we care about in particular is data. 
because it gives us information about the currently viewed or selected items. So here you see currently viewed or selected. In the previous target that we had in the product details page, we were viewing the product, but now we are selecting them. Regardless, in this data property is the information that we need about them. In this case, in the query over here, you can see that we have data selected the first item because this is always an array, no matter whether you are in a single product page or selecting different products in the index page, as I was here. So it is taking only the first product. So even if I select more than one, it will only pick the first one as it is right now and then getting the ID. And from this, it is running this query to the Shopify admin API and getting the data and rendering it over here. So now let's start modifying this to create a bundle with this. In this step, I'll be creating the queries for creating a bundle based on the selected products. Before that, I just want to mention the two assumptions we'll have here. The first one is that the bundles will only consist of two products. Even though Shopify supports bundling more than two together, we'll keep it simple with just two. Also, we'll assume that the products only have the default variant defined. The reason for these constraints is to keep this part simple, as this is not a bundle tutorial, and I'm just using it as an instrument to show what's possible with the admin action extensions. And also, all the queries, mutations, and properties you'll see throughout this video are based on the fields present in the admin API, which is what we will use to interact with Shopify. This is an example. Later in the video, we will be running the product create mutation. And here in arguments, you can see what you can pass to it. So for example, here, I will click on this product input link. And here you can see each field that you can pass, whether it is required or not, and a brief description of it. And likewise, for the, re for the return values here on the payload, you can see product, shop, and user records as being shown here. And all the fields that you can query out of any of these, you can get them by clicking on this, for example. And here are all the fields you can query from the product with a, with a brief description of each one of them. So let's start creating the code. OK, so in this step, I'll be creating a file for interacting with the admin API. I'll put this to the side. And here, I'll be exporting a class called admin API. And then in the constructor, I will pass a query function. And this query function is the one that we will use to interact with the admin API. In the code that Shopify generated initially, you can see that we are doing so using fetch. But the issue here is that this is not strongly tied. So I don't, ha I don't have this product and this title here. This is just of type any. And we are not taking advantage, or at least full advantage, of TypeScript in this way. And as these queries can get and will get quite complex, I think there is a strong case of trying to use a strong typing as much as possible in here. So this query functions, function we can get it from the use API hook. And to get the typing of that, to be able to pass it here, I can just go to the documentation and copy all of this. So let me get that. And let's create a type query. With this, now we can see that API version and GraphQL error are not defined in GraphQL error. We can let VS Code import it from here. And for API version, we'll have to build that type ourselves. But luckily, over here, we can click on API version here. And we can copy all of this and create the type above. And now we have this query defined. So I'll create this property that I can access it, that I can access in other methods, and then this that query will be equal to query. Now from my component, I can import this from admin API. And I can say that admin API is equal to new admin API and pass this query function to it. I can also wrap this in a use memo function to avoid reinstantiating this class each time that this component re-renders. 
And now let's start building the functions to interact with the API. Now I will be creating the necessary functions to create a bundle. Then after doing that, I'll explain what each one is doing. The reason for doing it this way is because it will make much more sense once the functions are in there and I'm able to jump in between them to explain exactly what each one is doing. So let's create the first one, private async get product variants. It receives a product ID as a string. And let's create the query now. So await this is query. Here we will pass the type in a moment. And the query itself will be query product ID. Here we will put product ID, then variants, the first one only, then edges, node, ID, title, and price. Now the type for this will be product and then product variants, which is a type that I will create above because we will be using it in other functions as well. So let me place it here. Type product variants. We'll have variants, then edges, then node, ID as a string, title as a string, and price as a string because the API returns it that way. Now if result, this goes above here, if result the data, we will return result the data, the product. Else, we will throw an error. Result, the errors, and the first error message that we have in the function. Now let's create the next one. Private async create bundle. Create bundle product to be more specific. Here we will have product, product one variants. This is a type of product variants. Product two variants. And then the name of the bundle, which is a string. Likewise, we'll have the query here. So result, this that query, we'll put the type here in a moment. And this one will be a mutation. So let's call it product create. And it will receive an input of type, type product input. We'll pass the input here. And from this result, we care about the product, the ID, the variants, because we need the variant ID. First one, we need the ID of the variant that it created. And now here, right, let's have the type first, product create. Product ID of string variants edges node ID of string and then this one is an array. Now over here, yes over here, if response if we sold the data. We'll do that there in a moment, but if not, let's throw an error. Result that errors that message. But if we got a response, let's create a merged variants input, which is what we'll pass to the next function. And over here, parent product variant ID. This will be result the data the product create the product 
of that variance, the digits, the first one, because we just asked for one, the ID, and then next we will have product, real, product, variant relationships to create. We have to be careful to not have a typo in here because the API expects it to be exactly this way. Here we will put product variants, other one variants, the variants and edges, the first one, note that ID and the quantity will be one. And then over here, let me copy all of this because the only difference here is that we will use the variance of the second product or the variant of the second product. Then let's return merge variant input. Now let's create the method that will link everything together. Link bundled product. This will receive a merged variance. We will create a type of this in a moment. And now let's create another query here. We'll pass a type here in a second. <clears throat> and this one will be another mutation. Variant relationship. And now here, this one receives an input type product variant relationship update input now product variant relationship bulk update we we'll pass the input here current product variants ID requires components product ID this requires component what will tell us if this is true then the bundle was created successfully if it is false then for some reason it failed and to get why if it failed we can use we can check this user errors field although now that I remember it, this result is already giving us the errors in result.errors. So let's try this. Let's try it just that way. I think that will be enough for now. So let's create a type for this. Let me copy it just this way to avoid any typo. Then I'll copy this. Then ID will be string. Requires components. Is a boolean and then product ID is a string. And now this any over here should be the type of this. So let's create this is the as type. Let's say that this is called type merged variant input. And this will be parent product variant ID, this will be a string, and then this will be an array of ID, a string, and quantity, no product. Now this, let's make this, this type. Actually, I think this should go in the type itself. Let's bring it to the top here so I can use it in the other function as well. And now let's change this any for this. <clears throat> also, something I something I was forgetting, I think I forgot it in the other notation too, is to pass the variables. So over here, input is this merge variance. And over here, I also forgot it variables input title will be the name so these are the parameters 
that will be the name. And then variants. As we are only creating a single one, we just need to pass the price. So the price of this variant will be product variant, the first one. We get the variant. And get the price. And we'll copy this. And do the same for the second one. So basically the price will be the sum of the price for the first and the second variants. And lastly, let's do something here with that result. So if result the data, we return result the data. Else, let's run error. Result that errors the first one with that message. And now, lastly, let's create a function that will call all of these ones. So, sync generate bundle. This one will receive product one ID, which we already saw that. We are getting from this extension, product to ID, and the bundle name. So let's get product one variants. This uh, get product variants, product one ID. Now product two variants. Um, <clears throat> the generate the generate variance will be this part of all over here. We'll call this one with get with product one variance, product two variance, and the bundle name. And lastly, the incorporation response will be equal to await this dot link bundled product and this will receive this input and let's return this now let's see if this is working so from my extension let me open it here inside let me add here a button Create bundle. And I'll click. What this will do is that it will try admin API, generate bundle, data that selected the first one, the D, data that selected the second one, and the D and the name test bundle. If this fails, let's get the error. Let's just cancel the login. And also, if this is, if this has success, let's just close the pop-up. So, let's see if this is working. Here, I'm going to find two that don't have any variants, like these two. And for more actions. We have our button here. Let's click on create bundle. So you see it said here, I passed it. Let's see, let's refresh. That's bundle. Look at it here. So it appears to be working. But how do we confirm that this is working? Well, let's first enable it. So here manage sales channel let's put it in the online store let's save and now let's view the store this is called test bundle so let's look for it this is it here we'll double check that the price is working in a moment but first let me add it to the cart let's go to checkout 
um, this was a bundle that I that I added previously just for testing. Let me remove that one so the card only shows the one that we care about. This bundle. So I'm going to check out. You can see here that the two products we added are being recognized as part of this bundle. And if we check on the price, so here we check out a snowboard liquid and a snowboard oxygen. A snowboard liquid is 749. Snowboard oxygen is 1,025. So the total here is working fine. This is the sum of the price of this one and this one. So now let's make our action more customizable. Let's start by adding a field that let us give an actual name to the bundle. And maybe let's also show which products were selected. Before continuing, let's quickly explain what the query functions we just created are doing. Basically, we are creating what Shopify calls a fixed bundle, as you can see in this tutorial, which is a bundle where its components and price are known at the time of creation. They have this very useful diagram over here that helps visualize it. Basically, when we select two products, those two products will be this conditional product and natural shampoo, and natural shampoo product in this diagram. And in our code, those will be these two that we are pass passing to this generate bundle function. Now, those two products are used to create this the hair and skin bundle product, and that's what we are doing in this create bundle product over here. Now, here we also have to create the variant, which we are also doing. But to create the variant, we need to know the price. And to know the price, we need to have already queried the product variance, which we do over here, and that's why the price is being queried here as well. Now, once we have all of this and create the bundle with the correct price, because again, the price is dependent on the price of, the, of these two variants, hence why we have to know it ahead of time, we, create, we have to link the bundle together, because even though this is already created, Shopify has no way of knowing that this bundle is linked to this variant and this variant. And it is required or necessary to link it because as you saw previously in the checkout, when you expand the bundle, you can see which products are included. And that, that works because we link them together. And also it helps with the inventory because if one of the products in the bundle is out of stock, then the bundle will not be available because one of its components is not available. So that's why this link bundle product is necessary. And this generate bundle product just helps orchestrate this entire operation. Here we create the variants, then we pass the variants with the bundle name to create bundle product, and then we link them together and return their response. I will leave a link to this tutorial from Shopify in the description in case you want to dive deeper into how this works. Here they are also using the same queries or very similar queries to the ones that we use in this tutorial and they have a deeper explanation of what they are doing in case you are interested in checking that out. But again, this is not a bundle tutorial, hence why I didn't want to spend too much time there. Now let's continue adding the visual part of our extension. Now to build the UI, we can only use the components that Shopify provides us, as I mentioned earlier. So this is what happens if we try to use a normal p tag here. For example, I can put hello in between them and you can see here that nothing has been rendered. If I remove this, then everything goes back to normal. So which components are allowed? Basically, anything that is in this page over here that I'll link in the video description as well. If you saw the Checkout UI Extensions video, this may look familiar to you and that's because Checkout UI Extensions also have their own page of allowed components but they are not the same. Check out the UI extensions, as you can see, have way more components than the ones allowed in admin extensions. And even for the same category of components, for example, forms in admin extensions and forms in Check out the UI extensions, the ones in Check out the UI extensions have a date picker, these ones do not, and also the look and feel of the components go according to where they are being rendered. These ones look cohesive in the admin page and these ones look cohesive in the checkout page. Also, 
even if some components do have the same name, they are not necessarily sharing the same API. A good example is inline stack in here and inline stack in here. Inline stack in here uses the spacing prop to manage the spacing between components. Meanwhile, meanwhile inline stack for admin extensions uses the gap prop to manage the spacing between components. The one in check audio extension doesn't even have it. So if you look for it, there isn't there isn't a gap property defined. And likewise, a spacing is not defined as a property here. It is just being used to describe some of the other properties, but it is not the name of any of these properties. So even if you build check audio extensions, you'll have to get familiar with which properties these ones do receive. Now let's start building the UI. So going back to the code. Let's remove all of this. And let's add a text field. You see? Let's add a text field. And the label will be bundle name. Now, let's remove this. Comes name and set name with a use state of an empty scene at first. The value of this will be name and on change we will pass set name. Now here let's add a button and let's put create bundle. This will be disabled if set name no if name that length is zero. Also, let's have a boolean state here. Is generating bundle and set is generating bundle. This will be initially false. And let's also disable this if is generating bundle is true. Now, on click, this button will generate will generate this button will generate the bundle so async function generate bundle admin api generate bundle and now we'll do data.selected the first one and its id data.selected the second one and its id and also let's pass the name let's put this inside a try catch if there is an error Let's just log it to the console. Finally, let's set is generating bundle to false. And here, let's set it to true. Now, everything inside this use effect can also be deleted for now. Let's see if it's coming too. And let's see how this looks like. Actually, if this works fine, let's close the model. So, let's see. Did this save? No, because there is an error somewhere right here. Forget to put generate bundle. Now this works. Okay, here we have our form. The button is disabled, but if I write something here, testing bundle field, right, I click the down button instead of the one that I should have clicked, testing bundle field, create bundle. If here I look for testing bundle field, we have the bundle that we just created. So that appears to be working fine. Now, if you see in here when we open this, this doesn't look quite right. There isn't much spacing in between these two and this button isn't as prominent as it should be. So let's set the variant to primary and let's set the gap of this block stack to base. I think this looks much better. 
now over here at the top it could be useful to add a heading bundling products and we will list over here in a moment the products that we are just bundled that we are about to bundle but also if data that selected that length is different than two because remember we are assuming that there will only be two products to be bundled so if the user selects only one or select more than two we are not going to handle that in what we are building for this video so let's just put only right we have to return this only two products are supported for bundling this heading maybe it could be too a bit too large so let's set the size to maybe four i think this looks better and now if i close this and select three products right so i had a small issue there i had to wrap this in admin action so it worked properly and now if i select only one product and open the extension only two products are supported likewise if i select three products and open only two products are supported but then if i unselect this and open the extension then we have our ui here working fine also i had forgotten to add an await to this so it wasn't waiting for the bundle to be generated before closing now let's try again bundle test 2 I click on create bundle it waits a second and here we see bundle test 2 so this is working just fine now it will be useful if we could see which products were selected so let's try doing that for this we'll have to do a query to get the product information for these two IDs that we have in here but that will be pretty straightforward so let's do just that now back in our admin APIs file let's create a new method get product data and this receives product IDs as a string an array of strings and to get this we are going to use the query parameter of the admin API the reason for that is because we are trying to get the information of more than one product in this case it will be two because we limited it to two in a single query so the way of doing this is by passing the query parameter that will look like this id is either 134 or id is 5678 now the issue with that is that the ids that we get here look like this global id shopify product one two three four so we have to extract this this last number of the of each one of these ids and format everything this way so let's do just that comes ids query will be equal to root ids dot map id and let's return here id is equal to id dot split by a backlash by slash already to get to separate this in array and then we will get the last item of the array with this at minus one which will always be this number and now let's join this with or and that will get us the query parameter that we will pass to get min api so let's get result will be equal to await this dot query we will pass a type here in a moment but first let bu let's build a query here Query is equal to product products first let's say 10 but we could just limit this to 2 if we wanted to I this query edges node title featured image here URL and all text now let's create a type for this which will be products edges node title string featured image 
with the URL of string and all text also as a string and this one over here is an array so let's make sure we put that now if we get result the data let's return result data the products that they just and let's grab from here only the information that we care about which is node we got to put map okay else let's just throw an error throw new error result the data the first error no result dot errors the first one and its message now here let's add a use effect see this is it's imported so use effect and when this loads if let's copy this conditional here if we only have two products then admin api dot generate bot dot get product data and let's pass it data dot selected zero dot id and data dot selected one dot id actually we have to put this in a function so async get product data because this is asynchronous it's in function and now we call it get product data here now let's get the result here in this variable let's wait for it and let's create a state that holds this so selected products data set selected products data let's see state here this by default will be null but it should be or it can be an array that has a string featured image with URL and all text all of which are strings and this is an array but it could also be null so let's see here we can pass here a loading state so loading will be this will be loading if selected products data is equal to, is equal to null and then here so selected products data will be equal to the result will be set to the result of this query let's see that nothing is broken this appears to be to be stuck in the loading state and let's open it again so the issue was that here we had a not equal so we were only entering here when we had something different than two products selected and we want the opposite we want to only enter when we have exactly two products selected so now our form is showing when it should but we have to render now the product data that we are fetching so let's put this in a block stack let's paste it here again and now let's go to selected product data that map here let's say product and i and then let's return a block stack let's put i as the key and let's put text here with product title now let's import an image from this package And here we will have as src product.featureImage.url and as alt text product.featureImage.altText. Let's set a gap 
of small. Let's see how this looks like. Okay, the images look a bit big. Let's improve that. So let's wrap this inside a box. And let's say that the inline size of this is maybe 80. And the block size of this is also 80. This looks much better. Although maybe we can say 120. And 120. Okay, that just do it. Now let's wrap this in an inline stack. This will put them side by side. And now here, let's say that we want the inline alignment to be center. And here also we want the inline alignment to be center. This will put this title here in the center too. Now here we can say that the font weight will be bold, bold 300 for example. And now to add some spacing, let's say that we wanted to add a larger spacing in between this and our form. The larger we can, the largest we can add here will be large. But I think that's not enough. So what we can do is that we can have a box that will serve as a spacing block because there is not a spacer component itself in the components we have here. So let's put an inline size of this to maybe 60 and then in a block size of 62. That may be a, bit, a little too much. Let's try a 30. Still a little too much. Maybe 15. I think that will do it. So, this part of the extension is done. Now let's add another action to our extension. Let's say that when we go to a bundle, I could here run an action that will show me which components or which products are being bundled in this case. So let's go to the code and do just that. The first thing we need to do is go to this Shopify extension.toml in our extension and we will add another extension point. So we will copy all of this, paste it below and the name will be bundle details The handle will be bundle details. Let's create a file name for this action extension details. And now this will render in product details action that render. Now let's create this file. And let's paste all of this setup let's copy this and let's import from Shopify UI extensions react admin let's import react extension use API admin action and text. So let's create an app function. And for now, let's just return admin action with a text of listing bundle components. Let's save this. Let's shut down the development server. Let's run it again. Let's wait for our URL here, I'm pressing P. Now we can see that there is the, the other 
target that I just create that I just added. So if I click this, this opens a product page. Let's see what did we miss. Right, we have to match this. We have to match the target properly here. So this should be like this. And this is rendering good. So now let's get the data that we need to, in case we have a product that is bundled, show its components. And if it is not bundled, let's just show a message that says that it is not being, that this product is not a bundle. So back in admin API, let's build the last query of this video to get the products that were bundled together to create this bundle. So we will pass product ID, which is the ID of the product that is being viewed. And now let's build the query. This one will be pretty lengthy. So here we'll add the typing in a moment. Now let's say query product ID product ID variance. We only care about the first one edges node requires components which will tell us if this is a bundle or not if this is not a bundle then we will just uh, render a message that says so and then product variant components edges node product variant and not the product variant we care about the product the parent product the title, the feature, the image, the URL, the alt text of that image. Now let's create the type for this. So product, variance, edges, node, requires components, it's a boolean, product, variant, components, edges, node, it just is an array by the way. Node product variant product title is a string featured image which is which has a URL that is a string and an alt text that is also a string. And I forgot to add that this edges is an array and now let's return the data that we need. So if we sold the data now is bundle, we will know that this is a bundle if we sold the data, the product, the variance, the edges, the first one requires components. If it's bundle, we'll return this, else return null. Also if we don't have result the data, then let's throw a new error. Result dot errors. Dot message. Now, if this is a bundle, let's say bundled products is result the data. The product that variance, that edges, that map. Here we get the node. Now the first product will be node. Dot product variant components. Dot edges. The first one, the node product variant, and the product. And likewise, the second product. Product two would be equal to pretty much this. But we will replace this with the second one. And now let's return product one and product two. And from this function, let's return bundled, bundled products. Now let's get this in our UI to show the products that we need to show.
Okay, so here let's have a state of bundled products set bundled products. This will be an array, this will be a an state, it will start as an empty array. That will be of type title featured feature I feature image URL type string alt text type string and this is an array we use this typing so often that we could have created a type for it actually anyways this could either be this or null and we'll see why in a moment so now let's do our use effect and we will run this on load so let's create a function async function get bundled products let's call it here now comes bundled products will be equal to here we will have to declare our mean API equals use memo let's import it Return a new admin API and we have to get some data from this API as well. So here we get query, we get data. Now let's pass query here. And let's say admin API dot get bundled products. And let's pass here the product ID. So data that selected the first one and its ID. This is synchronous, so let's do a wait here. And let's, if bundle products, if we get a result, actually this also returns null and our state accepts null. So set bundle products, bundle products over here. Okay, there are a few adjustments that we have to make to make this work properly. The first one being that we have to specify here that we only need the first item. This array only had one item anyways because we specified so here. And also here we need to ask for the first two items. Now over here let's say that this will be loading when bundled products that length is zero and now if on the products is not null then this product is a bundle otherwise we will render this product is not a bundle and here Let's see, this product is a bundle, this is working fine. And then if we open this one, this product is not a bundle. So we have that part working as expected. Now let's render the products itself when the, when the item is a bundle. So when the item is a bundle, let's have this, let's have a block stack. Let's have a heading here, bundled items, and then let's do bundled products dot map product and the index. Let's return an inline stack. Let's add a block alignment of center, and here. Let's import image and let's say that the SRC is product.featureImage.url and the alt text is product.featureImage.alt text. Also, as we had to do earlier, we have to put this inside a box component 
to limit its size so inline size let's say that this is 80 and block size let's say that this is also 80 and lastly let's just put the product the title and here let's add a key and let's see what we're getting so if I visit this product I get bundle items and I get the items that are part of this bundle so something we can do maybe is add a bit of space in here so gap of base let's also reduce the size of this let's make it of size 4 I think this looks much better and for last let's increase the font weight to bold 300 and I think that looks good so there you have it let's create a final demo of what we did in this video so let's select this one let's select this one let's select our extension let's say final bundle demo let's create the bundle we have it over here let's enable this in the online store so we can add it to the cart now let's look for final there we have it let's add it to the cart let's go to checkout and these are the products we just added to the bundle so this is working just fine i hope you learned a lot in this video you could see how to create admin action extensions and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and i'll try my best to answer them in time also if this is your first time seeing this channel i'll be posting more shopify related videos in the future so feel free to subscribe if you like it and i'll see you in the next video